I hope you are able to work out that if the RMS voltage is 240 volts at the mains, then that means the peak voltage must be 240 times root 2, which is about 340 volts. Now to work out RMS current and hence AC power. Now the maximum current is going to be the maximum voltage over R according to Ohm's law. And power, which is voltage times current, has a sine squared shape since both voltage and current are sine waves. Since it's a sine squared, that means that the average is half of the peak value. So average power will be maximum V times maximum I over 2, which equals Vm over root 2 times Im over root 2. So we end up with the average power equals the RMS voltage times the RMS current. So you can see that the RMS value was chosen so that the power dissipated in any AC device would be equal to the power dissipated with the same voltage and current in a DC device. You can see this in a school lab when you're using the power packs, most of them have AC terminals as well as DC. You'll find that a light globe will have the same brightness connected to 10 volts whether you're using the AC or the DC terminals. So instead of positive and negative terminals, you have active and neutral lines from the meter box. Active is sometimes called live, and that is the terminal that has the potential that is cycling from plus 340 volts to minus 340 volts 50 times a second. The neutral wire is simply the return wire to complete the circuit. Every device gets connected between active and neutral, and that means that the current in those devices washes back and forth, up and down, 50 times a second. The earth wire isn't part of the circuit, but is connected to the casing in metal cased devices to protect you from electric shock. There's a lot that students can research in the area of electrical safety, but it's no longer in the syllabus, so we won't be covering it here. Many devices will operate perfectly well on AC current, for example, incandescent globes. They light up because the filament is very hot. The filament gets hot because of the current flowing through it, so it doesn't matter if the current is changing direction or not, and it will glow with the same brightness for a given voltage DC or the same voltage RMS if it's running on AC. But other devices need to have the current flowing one way only. One example is the light emitting diode. A diode is a one way gate for current. The voltage current graph for one is shown on the right. You can see that when the voltage is positive for that diode, you get increasing current for increasing voltage, which is not too unlike a standard resistor, though you can see it's not ohmic because it isn't a straight line. And the other thing is that you need a certain minimum voltage, called the bias voltage, before you start to get any current through at all. But if you look at the left-hand side where the voltage is negative, described in the graph as back bias, you won't get any current however much you increase the voltage. So the diode essentially has very low resistance in what they call the forward direction and very, very high resistance in the backwards direction.